Yeah, it's been really good. It's been really fun uh, just being able to collaborate. Um, obviously, for, uh, coaches initially, and now that we got the players here, uh, really just starting to build that. And so uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been uh, it's been great kind of connecting with these guys. And uh, today was the first day on the field uh, to actually do some field stuff. So we actually had a football out there, and that was good. Uh, he's just really detailed, really diligent with his work. Uh, he's really just been awesome just to collaborate and kind of make sure as we go through this process that uh, we don't lose anything as we go through a transition. I think that's one, one big part of this thing is uh, there's been a lot of success. Justin's had a lot of success his first few years, and we want to make sure we build off of that and not, uh, not start from scratch. Uh, Justin was telling us on Thursday that he still was a little ways away from being able to throw. <laughs> Really, to be honest, I think most years, there's always a handful of guys that are going through this process, and it just kind of happens a lot of times. Uh, OTAs, a lot of guys are going through cleanups and all the different things that go through an off season. And so, uh, you know, this, this happens. You know, Zion will be going through it just like Justin. And so, uh, you know, I think you get as much as you can in the classroom, the walkthroughs, all the different components of that thing. And obviously, there'll be some field work that Justin may not be able to be a part of as, as much as he would want to, we would all want to. but. Uh, We'll catch up with it. We got plenty of time through through the training camp and all that. When you uh, were hired, you said you know you kind of knew of some guys from afar. Where are you at now, just uh, getting to know the roster and kind of evaluating that group? Yeah, r really. Ultimately, the the roster ended up. You know, we were able to pretty much bring everyone back from last year for the most part. And so, uh, you know, walking in that room today, it was really uh, you know other than Doug and Phil and myself, the three coaches that were new. Uh, everyone else was was a part of 2022, and so uh, you know it's been really fun just to kind of start building those relationships. I think that's the biggest thing about this thing is we're doing this thing together, and so as we kind of uh, find each other, start understanding each other, we start working together. I think we'll uh, we'll develop this thing and build it. Have you, like with any uh, position group, once you evaluated it, stood out about any any group that you, you didn't know about? No, I think each group's got, got its, uh, you know, I think the really cool part is listening to the position coaches initially, uh, just because those guys have spent a lot of time with these guys over the course of the last few years, really understanding uh, where their position is, getting to know some of the players, and then uh, ultimately kind of setting our eyes on the 2023. That was kind of our whole plan from the beginning. And so uh, it's been really, really good. I think, you know, you got a, a really cool offensive line that's, that's young, that's, uh, Developing that's going to be just a tremendous uh, strength of ours. You know, Corey leads the way, but you got a bunch of young guys who've, uh, you know, may, may have dealt with getting banged up a little bit last year, but but fought through it. And uh, you know, that's going to be a really, really good good group. You know, Gerald at the tight end spot, the young guys behind him, kind of finding their roles. Uh, you know, dealing dealing with health things, and you know, seemed like obviously a lot of guys were banged up. Uh, Receiver room, you know, kind of the same thing. You got Keenan, you got Mike, Josh. They've been doing it for a long time. Uh, they're really, really good, really talented. You got some younger guys in there, and then uh, obviously at the running back position with Austin, and then uh, then the younger guys who kind of had their different opportunities. And so uh, each group kind of has that that feeling to it, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So you had a chance to spend quite a bit of time, I'm sure, around uh, Brandon Staley. What what has that been like in getting to know him? <clears throat> Brandon's been awesome. Uh, he, he's been really, really good. I've, I've just loved, uh, you know, just working together, collaborating on this thing, uh, you know, kind of building, building this offense uh, towards 2023 and kind of, again, kind of embracing all the, all the good things that are going on and then hopefully kind of being able to add, add some different things that hopefully can uh, help, us, help us as we go, go on in our, uh, in our future here. But uh, Brandon's been awesome through, through the whole transition, through the draft process. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, so Thursday night, you – Added a, a wide receiver. Just uh, tell us a little bit about your reaction to that, and just your thoughts on, on Quentin. Yeah, Brandon's this defensive guy, and he's drafted three offensive guys. So I like this. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, uh, Q's Q. Obviously, you know he really stood out for us as we went through the process. Uh, you know, everyone kind of sees the measurables, the size, as far as the height and the weight and all that sort of stuff. But what he did, what he did for TCU from his versatility, I thought was really, really special. His ability to kind of catch and run. Uh, he, he was the fly sweep guy. He, he got the ball in a lot of different ways, and so you saw a lot of versatility in this game that maybe initially someone may not have necessarily anticipated. But uh, you know, we were really excited that he was there and available for us. 
did have some issue with drops, it sounds like there. Is that something you guys can correct or can, can you can improve on? Yeah, yeah, cer certainly. Uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's going to have things they want to improve on as they go into the N NFL, uh, you know, and so certainly he had a couple drops statistically if you, if you get uh, detailed into that. But, you know, he makes some spectacular plays. Uh, I think he's going to be just fine. It wasn't a big concern for us. Uh, you know, you see enough of his contested catches at TCU and the, the challenging catches that he did make. Uh, you feel very comfortable with that. Yeah, certainly there's a vertical element of it that uh, we're really, really excited about. Q, just the size, catch radius, he goes up and gets the ball downfield. Uh, you know, you can do it however you need to do it, whether it's size, uh, catch radius, speed. He definitely brings a vertical element to us. Uh, Darius, obviously, the kick return, punt return component of it. And then he's just got straight-up natural speed that uh, is very rare in this league, and only a handful of teams have those type of things. No, I think, uh, you know, sometimes drafts, that's just the way drafts go. Uh, certainly, there was a lot of tight ends in this draft that we, we liked. Uh, sometimes that's just, that's just the way drafts go. That's why they're drafts. Uh, we feel really good about the group. Gerald's done a tremendous job. He's, he's been in this league for a number of years and from afar have always been impressed with his uh, production and versatility at the tight end position. And then we got kind of this younger group that uh, we're really excited about just developing these guys, giving them roles and opportunities. I think cool thing about football is you can play it in a lot of different ways. There's not just one way of doing it. And so uh, we find what these guys do really, really well and try and enhance those things. Yeah, we've heard a lot about um, the last few months here about your your system and tight ends and how important that is. <coughs> is that, can you just kind of, not, not giving it two X's and other secrets, but I mean, in terms yeah. of um, how important the tight end is, is it more important in your, your scheme or somebody else's scheme? Or? Certainly, I, I think the tight end room is a very rare room, and it's a it's a very important room for an offense because they're really a part of every aspect of the game. Uh, run game, they're you know right in there with the O line and the run game component, the techniques. They're in the pass game, obviously the QBs. At times, they're a protector, even in the play action game and and whatnot. And so, those guys got to be able to do a lot of different things. And so, that it's a very uh, very important role just because of those things. But again. Uh, you know, we probably used a little bit more tight ends maybe uh, the last couple of years in Dallas, a little bit more 12 and 13 and some of those different things uh, suited us well. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever suits us best here as we kind of build this thing. But I'm excited about the guys we got. I think they all got uh, traits that are really, really exciting and excited to just work with them. On Thursday, Tom talked about and Brandon both talked about quitting and bringing some explosiveness. Mm -hmm. Another thing that they said was they thought your scheme would, would lend itself to more explosiveness. What, Without getting into dark secrets or anything, what does that mean, and why? What is it about your scheme that might lend itself to more explosive plays on this team? I think it's just something we've all talked about through this whole uh, process this off season. I think it's a collaborative effort. It's not just about you know. Dallas or whatnot or, or the scheme. I think it's just all of us working together on creating more explosive opportunities. I think Brandon's always the, a really awesome resource for me because he views it from the defensive side. And so, you know, he can express uh, the challenges that certain things create when, when you're on the opposing side. And so uh, the quickest way to get to the, uh, get to the end zone is, is big plays. You know, uh, this league, if you go 12, 14, 15 play drives, they're awesome. And they're really, really fun to be a part of because, you know, it, it bleeds the clock. It does so many good things. But uh, at the end of the day, when you do have explosive opportunities, you can take advantage of those. Uh, it's a quicker way to get to the end zone. And ultimately, uh, you know, when you look at the statistics, explosive plays has a huge indi indication or impact on who's winning games. This team has had some issues running the ball consistently, especially. What, and now that I'm sure you're very familiar now with what happened last year and all the tape you've watched everything. What, what do you, how do you see fixing that? Or what, what do you, how do you think that's going to, how can you make that better, better this season? It's just a collaborative effort. Uh, you know, I think you know there was some health stuff. Obviously, you know there were some missing pieces last year. I thought uh, there there was some good stuff. Uh, again, I think the biggest thing as you go through these transitions is don't lose any of the good. There's there's plenty of good that has gone on here, and so uh, you know run game included. And so the, there'll be different things schematically that maybe come from. Uh, 
my past experiences or someone else on our staff's past experiences that we think may maybe it'll better suit us or help us in some form or fashion. But uh, yeah, I think we're we're really really excited just to collaborate on this thing. I think uh, you know being able to utilize some of the things that were in place and uh, and some other stuff, and uh, we'll suit it however it best suits our players. Uh, whatever whatever best suits us, we can we can adapt and adjust however we need to. A little cloudy with uh, Austin with his contract, and does that impact anything at all here? Or is that is that? I mean, you got a long long time before you play a game, but I mean, is that slowing down anything <laughs> at all? Or? Right now, we're just so focused on really just the foundation of the system, uh, offensive football, uh, just kind of building a really solid foundation, focusing more on the. the the bigger picture, the, the the big picture, even from a scheme standpoint, and then, you know, as as you get into the phase three of OTAs, training camp, obviously, as you get to the season, we start, you know, narrowing that thing, getting specific from a player specific, uh, you know, responsibilities and whatnot. But right now, we're we're at such a wider lens that, um, you know, we're we're really teaching teaching for everyone. Oh, he's he's awesome. So I got a chance to meet him when he was here for his visit, and uh, he's a stud. I'm glad we have a couple Broncos. I think we got two now, so uh, we need to get a couple more somehow. We'll figure out a way. Did you guys take a picture of him or anything? We did take a picture, yes. <laughs> did he mention he's caught a couple of touchdown passes? Did you know that? Oh, yes. He, he's already told me. Uh, Andy Avalos immediately sent him to me. As he's the head coach at Boise, so he sent him to me as soon as he got drafted. So. Uh, for you guys concerned about the tight end position, maybe we got something there. So, <laughs> you mentioned uh, being excited um, about drafting the three offensive guys. When you draft a first round receiver and you already have Keenan and Mike and Josh, what does that just say just about the philosophy of just like you can really never have enough play playmakers? What's sort of your take on that and just kind of surrounding Justin with as many guys as possible? Yeah, no, I completely agree with it. I think uh, just. Whatever positions they are, I think sometimes we get very focused in the positions. Uh, you just want really talented players who can who can have an impact on the field. And whatever position they are, running back, receiver, tight end, we'll, we'll figure out how the scheme fits those guys. But uh, to have uh, Q join that receiver room with all the talent that's in there and those guys and the experience, I think it's going to be awesome for him because he's going to learn so much from those guys. And then it's going to allow us to, to put these guys in just different roles and different positions to allow them to be successful, I think. Um, you know, no one's ever going to complain about having a receiver room like this room where you have all this talent. I think we're really, really excited.